Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Highlights from the Hill, Sports Edition. You'll find out why in just a minute. This is the original HKM Ed series designed to bring you inside the Hopkinton Public School Systems. And I'm happy to welcome my co-host again, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, our superintendent. Hi, Jim. Thank you for having me as always. Great to see you again. You too. What are we talking about today? Uh, well, today I have brought a very special guest, uh, a new addition to the Hopkinton Public Schools. It's Rich Cormier, our new athletic director. So thank you for joining me here today. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So maybe, Rich, if you could just start out telling a little bit about yourself. Who are you? <laughs> International <laughs> man of mystery. <laughs> One of those small questions. Um, so uh, I'm originally from Massachusetts, but very different area. I'm from Rockland, Massachusetts, down on the South Shore. Um, and then I went to college at Boston University, where I did my undergrad and my graduate work. Um, I was very fortunate to get hired right out of college or right out of graduate school at Norwood, uh, where I was for 12 years as a teacher. Um, I coached multiple sports. I coached basketball, volleyball, baseball uh, while I was there. I was also a dean of students my last two years. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started to kind of consider the possibility of going into the athletic director role as it sort of merged those three things, the teaching, mm -hmm. the coaching, and the administrative work as a dean. Um, and again, I was very fortunate to get a job that year um, at Foxborough High School, where I've been for the past three years. Uh, recently, my family moved um, a little bit further away from Foxborough. We now live in Menden. Um, my wife, Colleen, is also a teacher at the high school. Um, so when this job opened up in, in late summer, it was just a great opportunity to come to a terrific school, great community. Um, it was a little tough with the timing, uh, mm -hmm. leaving Foxborough and coming in here right as the fall season was starting. Um, but again, I, you know, I knew it was the right decision, uh, and I'm glad it all you know, worked out. Oh, we're glad of that, too. <laughs> yeah. So did you always know you wanted to be an AD, or did it just happen? How does one become an AD? <coughs> That's a great question. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, if you ask me when I was in my 20s, um, when I started coaching and I saw what ADs did, uh, I, would never, I would have said never. Like, I never wanted to do that ever. <laughs> um, it really wasn't until I got into the administrative um, piece when I was a dean of students. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I liked that side of things, um, working with students, working with administration, kind of just having a different uh, lens uh, into education. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, uh, vice principal and, and principal role would have taken me out of athletics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very hard. Uh, most schools actually, it's, you're not even allowed to coach mm -hmm. um, in those roles. So for me, the AD role seemed a little bit better fit for why I went into education in the first place, um, which was you know, obviously to work with, with students, but I also always knew I wanted to coach and I knew I wanted to work with students from that lens. Um, so this kind of, again, merges those worlds together and um, just seemed like a good fit. And, and since I started a couple of years ago in Foxborough, I, I've really enjoyed it. So can I ask you a question? Yeah, you mentioned that being a dean of students, the administrative aspect of it. What's a dean of students? So um, it varies. Uh, sometimes you hear that term and I think every school sort of runs there. Uh, sort of central office a little bit differently. Norwood has a unique system uh, where they only have one vice principal and then they have four deans. Um, and you actually stay with the class all the way through. Mm -hmm. uh, and you really get to know those students really, really well. And so you're, in essence, a vice principal. The only difference is we didn't evaluate teachers. Mm -hmm. And we actually still taught two classes. So we still sort of had a foot in the classroom mm -hmm. and then half administration as well. So we handled all the discipline. Uh, suspension hearings, um, all of those things that typically a vice principal would do, mm -hmm. but we were also the class advisor. Um, so in my last year at Norwood, I organized the prom, <laughs> which I knew <laughs> nothing about. Um, and then one of the cool things about being a dean was actually we're the, we were the people at Norwood, and, and still to this day, the dean reads the names of the graduates at graduation, oh, nice. which is kind of a, a neat conclusion to the whole yeah. um, process. So uh, it's sort of a mess of roles. Yeah. Um, but the best way to explain it is, is really what a vice principal does, but okay. kind of without that teacher evaluatory um, position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it feels like you're a little closer to the students there too, which is really nice. Kind Absolutely. Like model. Yeah. So your day now, you just talked about your old job being kind of a mishmash, but I would argue <laughs> that being an AD is kind of a mishmash as well. Yes, absolutely. Uh, how much time do you get to spend with the kids? So that's one of the things I'm trying to do as much as I possibly mm -hmm. can, coming in and getting to know the student athletes. Um, but it, it is a challenge because there's also so many other things that are being new is keeping me from doing that. Um, having been at Foxborough for a few years, I was actually at a great spot where 
really the best part of my day was going out in the afternoons and being, you know, watching the students compete. And I still am able to do that here, but I'm not able to be out and about during the day as much as I'd like. Um, like one of the things I did in Foxborough was I'd just hang out in the cafeteria during lunch. Mm. And it was just a great way to interact with students um, when you're not out at the fields. Um, I just do not have the time <laughs> mm. right now to do that. But I'm looking forward to once things, you know, calm down a little bit and I'm a little more settled to be able to do those things. So what is keeping you busy now? <laughs> well, maybe I should ask what isn't. That's the short <laughs> yeah. list. Uh, well, a big part of it is just you know getting to meet people. So it's a lot of meetings. Um, when I first came in, it was with the fall coaches. Now it's mm -hmm. already transitioning into winter and spring, um, trying to get a handle on those things. Um, then, of course, the Triple E um, situation. You know, there was obviously a schedule in place. Um, I've had to redo a lot of that schedule um, as a result of Triple E. Um, we're still dealing with it. Mm -hmm. um, and now has actually been the toughest part. You know, when the curfew uh, or restriction time was about 7, and even 6.45, we were still in pretty good shape. Now that it's getting lower and lower to 6 o'clock, it's really, really hard to mm -hmm. get all of our games in. Um, and then what people probably on the outside don't necessarily know is, well, you got plenty of fields. Mm -hmm. Well, we also have lots of teams. Mm -hmm. We have about 20 teams that are looking for field space on any given afternoon. Wow. Um, and then the other issue is officials. They've mm -hmm. all already been assigned. Yeah. So if you even have an open field to, let's say, move a JV game, there's no one to officiate it. <laughs> right. So it's just those logistical challenges, mm -hmm. uh, working with the opposing school, working with our coaching staff, working with the assigners that, that work with the officials, uh, transportation. There's all those little pieces that, that fit into it. So, um, you know, when you move a game, the decision doesn't take long, but then the actual pieces can take hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it eats up your time pretty quickly. Sure. So how many fall athletes are there? Uh, we Roughly? have between the high school and the middle school, we have about 750. Yeah. So every day is like planning a wedding. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A very big one. Yes. <laughs> yes. Interesting. So I'm curious because you came from a coaching background, mm -hmm. athletic-wise. Um, is there any aspect of coaching with the athletic director? I try to view my job as sort of being like sort of the head coach of the athletic department. So I try to work with the coaching staff, mm -hmm. which right now I'm just trying to get to know them so I can see what their personalities are um, and which ways maybe I can offer assistance, um, you know, based on their strengths and weaknesses that they already have. Um, when you come into any role like this, you inherit a lot, mm -hmm. right? And I can say I'm very fortunate. I think the coaches that I've seen have been terrific. Yeah. So I feel very fortunate that I've inherited, inherited a very strong coaching staff. So it's really just a matter of getting to know them um, because a big part of it is trust, right? Um, if I'm going to provide any sort of feedback or any sort of um, critiques, it also has to come from a place where, where they trust me and they respect me yeah. um, to, to take those critiques and feedback well. So. Um, not only am I trying to get to know the students, I'm really trying to get to know all the coaches and the ins and outs and, and really what makes them tick, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that I can be a good resource for them. Um, at, at the first meeting I had with the fall coaches, um, I, I told them my, I consider my role to be really two things. One and first and foremost is to ensure that our students have a great experience athletically, whether they're the best player on the team or maybe not the strongest player on the team. And then my second is to allow coaches to coach and try to take a lot of things off their plate so that they can focus on, on the actual coaching. Sure. So when you're about to take a job in a new community, which you've just recently done, you obviously have some preconceptions. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that community about? What mm -hmm. are the kids like? What are the families like? Mm -hmm. What has been your biggest surprise? You know, being in, in Foxborough, being in another high school that's relatively local, um, we played Hopkinton in a number of sports. Sure. Um, I'm very familiar with the TVL as well, the league in which we mm -hmm. play, and, and knowing all, all the athletic directors. Um, so I, I feel like I had a pretty good handle on what I was applying and why I wanted to come here and what a great school and community it was. Um, the one thing I will say that was, even though I knew the school was bigger, you know, Foxborough is about 800 students. Mm. Um, so now coming into a school that's over 1,200, mm. I, I don't think I realize how much that 400 student difference really is. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's like 50% more. Oh. You know, I mean, we have, I just <laughs> meant, you just asked how many athletes we have, and we have about 750, which is almost the total student population at In my Foxborough. previous school. Right. <laughs> right. So just the sheer number of student athletes, uh, the number of teams we have, um, you know, we have 28 fall teams. Mm. <laughs> you know, it, it, there's, so there's just a lot more balancing. Um, we also have a lot more levels here. Uh, in terms of freshman and middle school than I had in sure. Foxborough. So those have been the biggest, 
I don't want to say surprises because I did know that those teams existed, but I don't think I realized quite how much more involved um, it would make my day-to-day -day operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And overall, the kids? Everything's been great, honestly. Great. Um, getting to know this, the, the, the student athletes out on the field, uh, also like our Hiller Grillers, um, you know, in the student section. We've had a great student support at our games, which has been a challenge because our football games haven't been your, your traditional sure. Friday nights. Yeah. But we had a great crowd for our home opener uh, this past Saturday against Norwood, which was, you know, a thrilling win as well. We scored with 42 seconds left to, to win. Yeah. Um, we've also had pretty good crowds out on, you know, our soccer fields as mm -hmm. well, which is nice to see. And it's hard to do because those games are at 3.30, 3.45. Right. So it's hard to have student sections out there, but the students have been great. I've been meeting with some of the captains. I'm actually meeting today after school with some of our winter captains um, to talk about the upcoming season. So all the interactions with students um, have been great. The families on the sidelines, um, I'm very impressed by how many of them come out of their way to introduce themselves to me, mm -hmm. um, which is really, really nice, and it's very welcoming mm -hmm. uh, as well. Hmm. Now, um, I know that obviously you're focused on um, uh, working with the, with students and getting them into a team and winning. Uh, what what is something that, like in the past month, has kind of risen to you that you would like to do here, or accomplish here, or start here? It's a good question. Um, I I don't know that I've still seen like the full picture mm -hmm. because it's been. I'm not someone that operates or, or prefers to operate on a day to day, -to -day basis, but because I came in after the season had already started, I very much am going <laughs> more day to day than I would like. Mm -hmm. um, so in the larger lens, I think that's hard for me to answer because our teams, as, as everyone knows, do very well in terms mm -hmm. of wins and losses, yep. pretty much across the board. I yeah. mean, this season uh, we have had great success uh, in our various sports teams so far. Um, so it's really more just trying to get a sense of um, what areas can we improve. and. You know, again, many of our teams are engaged in the community, which is great. So I can't say I'd love to see them get more engaged in the community because they seem to be already doing that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I do hope to bring was something that we did at Foxborough and in, in my previous league, the Hockamock League, um, and I've actually already s spoken to Mr. Bishop about this um, and the other ADs in the league, is we did um, multiple captains conferences and leadership conferences within mm -hmm. our league and bringing the captains from different schools together. Um, and I just... One of the things that I've found with that in, in the Hockamock League is I just think it will increase the overall sportsmanship mm. in our games because the captains all knew each other mm -hmm. from doing these. We'd sit them together so like the field hockey captains would do things together, the soccer captains would do things together mm -hmm. at these conferences so that when it came time to play one another, they could help control the emotions. Mm -hmm. There was a familiar face on the other side. Um, so that's something I'm hoping to bring not only to Hopkinton but to the, to the league as a whole. Um, but again, I can't say there's any like glaring issue um, mm -hmm. that has stood out to me. Um, no, that, I think that's really awesome. I just read an article the other day where there was a team that didn't have um, like a band, mm -hmm. and there was a band that didn't have a team. So the team invited the band to play at their game. Right. You know, so just that kind of like sportsmanship, and mm -hmm. you know, this is a game, and, right. we're, and we're playing it. We're playing it to win, but we're playing it to improve ourselves right. is great. A, I think it's really important to keep things in, in perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, you know, I've never really met a student athlete that didn't care if they won. I've never met a coach that didn't care if they won. <laughs> I mean, that's clearly what we're trying to do, yeah. for, at least at the varsity level. But ultimately, you got to keep it in perspective and what's really the most important thing. Um, and and I, again, I, I feel like our coaches are doing that and doing a really nice job. Um, keeping things in perspective and making sure it's not all about winning and losing. Um, it's funny you even mentioned the band. I thought it was so cool. This is, again, something I just haven't seen at my other two schools that I've been at. We had a big volleyball match uh, against Barnstable earlier this year, um, and Mr. Hay um, got together a little pep band, and they played in the stands for our volleyball match, and it was just so cool to yeah. have that kind of environment yeah. um, at a volleyball match, as well as obviously what they do at our football games. Mm. Uh, and we're already trying to organize another one later in the year uh, mm. at volleyball as well. So um, there's just a lot of good things already happening, so it's just fun to be a part of. Yeah, on balance, it's just amazing how nice this school system is, yeah. you know? Absolutely. <laughs> So you just mentioned, you know, at the varsity level, sort of the goal is to win. But I think what you've really done, sort of, or what we have in place, is something that is programmatic, right? Mm -hmm. We have our 
middle school kids, we have freshman sports, we have JV sports. Talk a little bit about the evolution. Like how does it work when you're an eighth grader and suddenly you're a senior mm -hmm. and you go through a whole process? So the middle schools and having so many middle school teams is relatively new to me, uh, but I think it's, it's really, I haven't been here long enough to know if it's, it's fully in line, but it seems to me a great feeder system and maybe why mm -hmm. some of our teams do do you know, so well once sure. they get to the varsity level because these kids are being uh, sort of indoctrinated. Maybe that's not the best word, but they're definitely being pulled in as part of the program. What I've, what I've really enjoyed seeing is that our varsity coaches also care very much about their JVs, their freshmen, mm -hmm. and also the middle school. So I think seeing these kids develop all the way through is one of the reasons why you're seeing the success in terms of the wins and losses. But at those levels, what we talk about uh, with our coaching staff is it's not about wins and losses. Sure. It is strictly about development. Um, one of the things even when I coached, I always talked about meaningful minutes. You can say like, oh, everybody plays. Well, if you play the last two minutes of a blowout, it's not really everyone's mm -hmm. playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at those levels, it's really more about giving kids the opportunity to participate when the game is still in the balance, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's why I refer to it as meaningful minutes. Sure. Um, and I think, our, again, our teams do a nice job of that. Our coaches do a nice job of emphasizing that it's about development, it's about improvement. The best player on the freshman team may not end up being the best player on the varsity team. It's mm -hmm. who puts in the work outside of the season, you know, who really has that drive to get into the weight room and do all the other things that you need to do to be a good athlete. Um, and I've seen it in, in my 16 years a lot, where sometimes the best player growing up is not the best player once they get to the varsity level. So mm -hmm. I think having this programmatic um, development in the system that's in place here really does help that along. Mm -hmm. It also allows our teams to keep a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. So again, in Foxborough, we teetered right on the line between having plenty for two teams, but not quite enough for three teams and then that led to having to cut a lot of students, mm -hmm. uh, which is unfortunate. But you also don't want to have a, too many kids on a team and then no one's playing, no one's developing. Mm -hmm. Here, we're, we're able to have you know, three full teams sure. and really provide a lot of opportunities. And I think, <clears throat> again, that's just great. Whether they end up playing as a varsity player or not, they're still having that high school athletic experience. And I think that's so important to their overall educational experience. Yeah. Did you say that in your interview with Mr. Bishop? Because I would have hired you on just what you, <laughs> <laughs> you said. Um, I do think it's really important to think about kids' experiences mm -hmm. in athletics as opposed to just you know the wins and losses mm -hmm. column. So that was, that was really nice. Um, we are moving into budget season. <laughs> do you see any, any big things that you would be looking for as you go into <coughs> that season? Again, from, from like just going around, I feel like our facilities are, are fields i mean we're in pretty good shape i mean obviously nice. everyone would love more fields everyone would love more turf like i mean of course um but i think overall we're in a great spot mm -hmm. um, the biggest challenges in the budget which they are i'm sure far more magnified on your end um is the a lot of things that we can't change which is the coaching salaries mm -hmm. transportation is huge for us huge uh, especially again with the number of teams we have um, and making sure that they play, a, you know, a nice season. You know, you don't want to have a team that only plays, you know, middle, it's great to have a middle school team, but if they only play six games, <laughs> there's not a huge point in that. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have all these teams, but then it does add to the budget in terms of buses. And then every year the cost of officials goes up. Sure. <laughs> so and those are the three big things that are constantly going up. Right. Um, that we obviously need to have. Uh, you need to have coaches, and transportation, and officials. So, but in terms of our supplies and our equipment, I think you know our facilities are in really good shape. That's really nice to hear. Yeah, <laughs> and then I think we also have the the great dilemma of postseason play. Mm -hmm. You know, if your students make it to postseason play, and so many of our teams do, yeah. that incurs costs as well. But mm -hmm. you wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Exactly. So, and yeah. and that is it's hard because not only do our teams do well and make it, we also end up hosting. Mm -hmm. um, and what maybe people don't realize is those costs do not go to the MIAA. They go to the host school. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes, there's in, you know, during the regular season, there might be two officials. In the postseason, there's three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you're paying for those officials, and you're paying for staffing of those games. Um, transportation can also get further. I know last year, our boys' hockey team made it to the state final, which is at the Garden. Obviously, very expensive to get into the Garden. Baseball made it to the state final. I think that I believe that game was in Lowell. 
you know, so you start to, the transportation starts to get a little bit mm -hmm. more expensive. We are at the uh, very, I guess, northernmost part of our division in most sports. Yes. We tend to be south from most sports. We are central in some. We could play Nosset, hmm. mm -hmm. the Plymouth teams, you know. Sure. So once we get into tournament play, we're either home and incurring costs, <laughs> you know, or we're away and we're, it's a pretty substantial transportation cost. So, but at the end of the day, obviously, you want your teams to go as far as they can. So it, it, unintended, unexpected costs, but, but all good. Hmm. So at some point since you've um, taken on this role, there mm -hmm. had to have been one of those moments that was just sort of magical, something great that happened. I'm hoping that happened. <laughs> <laughs> has, has that happened and, and what was it? Um, I, I think there's a few things, to be honest, sure. um, that I've seen um, that I just th think have been great things about the community. Uh, we had a doubleheader soccer game over at Fruit Street, which was youth night, and it was just great to see the youth soccer, Parks and Rec, and just everyone sort of come together for that event. And again, I think that's what speaks to the community and yes. the strength. Um, we had a, a benefit game um, Tuesday um, for a student who passed away six years ago mm. um, on the field hockey team. And again, it was just great to see people come together. Um, coaches that could, who weren't already practicing, had their teams come and support this on. The team also ended up winning late in the game, two to one, which was great. The, the young lady's parents were there to address the team afterwards as mm -hmm. well. Um, so that was terrific. I already mentioned having the band come to volleyball. <laughs> um, and just having s the student sections at all these other things. You tend to think of student sections, or at least a lot of times in the AD world, it's football, basketball, and hockey. That's mm -hmm. where you tend to see student sections. And I think it's been great that we've seen them at soccer games. We've seen them at field hockey games. We've seen them at volleyball matches. Um, it's really, really been great to see. Mm -hmm. um, and then even this past Saturday where we had our first home football game, for me this was unique, but I think it's such a cool thing, the Hillos Grillers being out there yeah. uh, pregame. We also had a Unite event uh, that was going on, uh, which is a club at the high school, which was to try to get more freshmen uh, sort of involved and, and make sure they understand that come to these things. It's not just for the seniors, you know, that kind of thing. So there's just been a lot of things where I've gotten a sense from the community um, and from the events that go on, it's very inclusive and it tries to be very, very sure. inclusive. And we're excited. Um, tomorrow we're hosting our first un home uh, unified basketball game. So I sent out a notice to the staff to try to come down and watch that. Because um, if you've never seen a unified event, they are the best. Mm. So. so you've talked a little bit about Hiller's Grillers twice now. Do you <laughs> want to just explain what that is? Because uh, I do think it's a cultural thing yes, for us and it's um, really neat. So. Uh, and maybe I don't know the full understanding, but it tends to be led by seniors, um, and they hang out pre-football games, and they, they actually grill on the outfield of our baseball field, um, and they hang out before the game, um, and then they, you know, they all come in, they have shirts, they tend to uh, tweet out our highlights and things that are going on. They set up like themes you know, for what they're gonna wear at the different games. Uh, so our first football game was a blackout. Um, and, and again, I've just kind of chatted with some of the guys that are in there, mm -hmm. and, and they're, just, they're just there to have a good time. But the nice thing is that you know, they, they don't cross the line. They have fun mm -hmm. in the stands, um, but they do it in, in, in a fun way um, you know, where we're not being unsportsmanlike. Sure. Um, and so a, a recent episode of Mr. Bishop's podcast, 90 Hayden Road, they interviewed some of the Hiller Grillers and kind of gave their backstory. Yeah. So that's an opportunity, too. Yes. Sure. Uh, Technically, and I don't necessarily know that people know this either, that you are part of the administrative team mm -hmm. at the high school. So do you want to tell any deep, dark secrets? What's it like to work on <laughs> the administrative team? Um, it, honestly, it's been great. Yeah. Um, Evan, Josh, and Justin, um, and, and also uh, what people probably don't realize is how much we work together as well as mm -hmm. with, with Susan and Kim and everyone over across the street as well, yes. and also Tim Person, who's the director of building and grounds. Um, so it really is, there's a lot of that stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously I work most closely with, with Evan, Josh, and Justin, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been as supportive as they can be. They come in almost every single day to say like, hey, is there anything that we can do to help, knowing obviously that I'm new. Um, they've been at a lot of our events, whether it's just to see the first half. I know the students love seeing them there. Um, you know, so it's been, it's been, for me, great to see how much the administration values athletics as the overall part. Because I know for everybody else, I mean, it's my job. It's my central focus. But for everyone else, it's 
sort of just a small piece of the pie mm. that's going on. And, um, you know, so it's nice to see that it is valued here in the community. I don't think you'll ever talk to Mr. Bishop without him saying, go Hillers yes. at some point. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is very true. Um, yeah. One thing I'm wondering about is uh, looking at the, you do many different things, as many people do in their jobs, all these different things all over the place. What is the best thing that you do? Whether you define that as something for the students, something mm -hmm. for the curriculum, something that you personally find enriching, what's the best thing that you do in a day? For me personally, the best thing is the afternoons and being out on the fields. There's no question. Just mm -hmm. watching the, the, the students do what they love to do and compete and represent our school and our community, you know, that's the best. I mean, there's other things that I really enjoy, but that's definitively the best. Yeah. You know, and then when you get a chance to meet with the students and, and have a little bit more like one-on-one um, -on -one conversations, mm -hmm. um, do some, you know, we have three students who represent us. Um, as ambassadors to the MIA, so I met with them earlier this week, and we're running a, um, you know, a little bit of a fundraiser to collect socks for the homeless right now. Mm -hmm. um, so anytime you get to do those types of events, that's a lot of fun as well, yeah. and it's very rewarding. Um, but but definitely, yeah, you know, being out and, and watching our teams and our coaches compete is is the best. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I know this has been like you know as grueling <laughs> as an entire game, but our time is actually coming to a close now. <laughs> So thank you so much for uh, coming on here and talking yeah, all about your job. Well, and thanks. Welcome to Hopkinton. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thanks for being part of our community. And I think a lot of what you said just really sort of reinforces the fact that Hopkinton's an amazing place to be. Yeah, yeah on, In our classrooms and on our fields. So right. thanks, Rich. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for having me. Okay. Yeah. And thank you very much for tuning in for this episode of Highlights from the Hill. I look forward to seeing you next time. From the outside, it looked like I had it all together. Great education, good job, but inside I was massively insecure. Drinking helped me calm my fears, but I ended up losing everything. When I finally admitted I needed help, I came into Teen Challenge. And as time went on, I didn't feel so insecure. Now my whole world has been rebuilt, and I'm not going to lose it again. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.